Hello again everyone, welcome back to our films on the new Annie Maunder Prize for Image Innovation, a part of the Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. This video is a tutorial for how to take astronomical data and turn it into stunning images of space. Now most people have heard of the Hubble Space Telescope and may have seen some of its images, but many of you may not know that the observations taken by the Hubble Space Telescope are actually available to the public. And so anyone can download, recreate, and innovate these images. Now in this tutorial, what we'll be doing is taking a Hubble Space Telescope image and showing you how to process it. Now, thank you to our sponsors of our competition, Insight Investment, for helping to produce these video resources. So let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone, I will show you the basic steps for producing a final colored image by using open data and open sources. First of all, the most important thing is to choose the source from which we will download the files. I have chosen the Hubble Space Telescope, but there are plenty of sources out there, so it's up to you what you will use. Every colored image consists of three different channels, the red, the green and the blue. So we need to download three different files and assign the three different colors to them. Now, I have chosen a very famous object, which uh, it's a surprise, you will see in a bit. And uh, we have here the three different uh, photos, the three different images for the uh, R, the green, the red, the green and the blue. And you will notice that these files are uh, named and saved as FITS files. In astronomy and astrophotography in general, we use um, FITS files, it's the most commonly used uh, file, instead of a simpler file format. It contains also a lot of information apart from the, the image. And it's very important to convert these files into simpler files before we open them in a photo editing program. So our first part will be that, to convert these images into simpler files. For this, we will open uh, and use Fitz Liberator, which is free and open. You can download it in your computer. And I will start with the, the image that I have assigned as the red color. You can see there is a window with a lot of information. The most important thing here is this graph, which uh, shows us uh, the distribution of the brightness of the pixels. And um, I will change some settings, uh, the stretching settings here. So for me, it works better to use um, uh, these uh, scaling uh, settings, but you can choose your uh, own. You can play around with this and you can also devise the guide that is included. But usually the arcsine h uh, function works better because it gives you a, a distribution of the pixels which is quite visible as you see. So there is a peak here uh, in our graph. This corresponds to the background of the image. There is a tail and this is um, representing the nebulosity. And finally this end of the tail which corresponds to the stars. Now there are black and white levels and we will adjust them. I will play around with them in order to increase and decrease the, the brightest or the darkest parts of the images of the image. So that's up to you, but I will give you some examples here. If I move the white level towards the, the right of the image, it becomes too faint. Uh, if I move it towards the left, it becomes too bright, so that means it will be uh, oversaturated. Um, all the way around, if I do the same with uh, the black level and I move it towards the right, it becomes too dark. If I move it towards the left, it becomes too bright. So you really need to find the balance between the two levels. And um, uh, this is again um, uh, up to you and you need to play with these uh, levels. So really the goal is to try to pick out the features that you want to draw out of the image that you're looking at. Exactly, yes. So for this uh, image, uh, which I have assigned as the red channel, um, remember that if I, because it's the red channel, if I leave it here in the oversaturated uh, uh, area, the final image as well will be too red. Uh, so I don't want that. You may want it, but this is exactly up to you what you will do. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So as soon as you finish with um, the uh, with the settings and the, the black and white levels, you save the file and always in a TIFF file because this is uh, the step that will allow you to open the file uh, later on in a photo editing program. So we have saved our file and we will proceed with the second channel, which is the green. So I uh, will repeat exactly the same thing with the green uh, channel. So we set the parameters and um, the, the different settings and also the same will be repeated for the blue channel. So it's exactly the same process, but you need uh, to do it separately for every file. And now we have three separate TIFF files and we can open them in a photo editing program to do further processing. In our case here, we have chosen GIMP, which is an open and uh, free open source. So this is where we will merge the three different channels and have uh, our final photo. And so this is where we're actually going to add color to the photograph as well and make it into a beautiful space image. Exactly. So here uh, you will see all these black and white images to be converted into a final colored image. So all the colors will be revealed here. We will open uh, all the different uh, TIFF files and we will merge them. So don't worry for the boxes that might appear here. Uh, it's all fine. I will rotate it uh, because this is the way that it will show me <coughs> the best view of the photo. So you can just keep OK and uh, proceed. So three different channels. And here we will uh, combine them in the one colored image, final result, we'll compose them and make sure that these are corresponded correctly. And let's see what will be the final result. All right. Beautiful. So uh, it is clearly uh, which photo we have uh, chosen, which object. So this is a very famous object from the Hubble Space Telescope. Some comments about um, our photo. It's uh, clear that it's a standard RGB photo, uh, something that you might expect uh, from Hubble Space Telescope. But in this particular version, uh, the stars are quite oversaturated uh, in the blue channel, so that's why they appear quite pinky. So we need to go back to the blue channel and change that in order to uh, have a more balanced uh, view of the stars. And of course, you might like it as it is, so this is up to you. I will not change it at the moment, so I will just proceed more and do some further uh, changes in the brightness and the contrast of the photo. But I will not leave the image as it is, because uh, we are talking about innovative images. And um, this is what we really expect, image innovation. So I will uh, do an extra setting and have the final photo. And here we go. Let's see what the, the last result will be. I have inverted my photo, so that means everything will look different. All right, yes. So here in the, the photo, you can clearly see that there is uh, some nebulosity. The stars are not that uh, bright. So what we really want to highlight here, for example, is the, the pillars, which are the pillars of creation. This is a part of our galaxy where there are thousands of stars forming. And a lot of these stars are exactly like our sun. So this can be a very uh, specific example of what you can do. It really depends on your ideas, your perspectives, your imagination. So be as creative as you want, and the result can be both artistic and at the same time educational and show something that we don't uh, uh, see, we haven't seen before. This is the innovation. And as it applies uh, the, the name of the award itself, uh, we really want an image innovation here. Now, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to or where to find the publicly available images from the powerful research telescopes that you can use for this prize. 
Um, if you are inspired to participate um, in the Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition, the competition runs from January to March, and we're really looking forward to the new images that you've innovated.